questions. Okay, so today we're going to finish up chapter four on the standard template library, and then we're going to start in on chapter five on linked list. So linked list are our first real data structure we're going to we're going to roll our own on. We're going to create the whole code. Okay, of course a lot of it's in the book, so we're going to be able to type in it and then use it to um, to create programs. Okay. So just a point about scheduling, um, next Monday, okay, so today is Wednesday, okay, so we'll have a class today, we'll talk about linked list, a little bit about the other stuff in chapter four, linked list. Uh, tomorrow, we'll do more on linked list. Today's more theory of linked list, tomorrow is going to be more practicality of linked list. And then on Friday, we'll have a lab and also a review, because the midterm, because it's summer, and summer's crazy the midterms coming up um, on next Monday, okay? So that's a little earlier than half <clears throat> because um, I didn't want to give you too much material when we're just trying to get used to everything, okay? So we'll talk more about that as we go along. Then we come back, then we'll hit some more of uh, the data structures we're doing ourselves, the big ones, stacks and queues and, and all that stuff, okay? So uh, I am recording, so which is good. So I don't think I posted the video from yesterday. I will send me an email if I end up not doing that for some reason. Um, anyway, so let's finish up chapter four. Okay, there's a lot of stuff we're not going to deal with a ton right now, just because I'm more interested in moving on to stuff we're creating ourselves. Okay, but the, the last thing they talk about in that chapter, let me get where I'm sharing the iPad screen here. Up. Okay, there we are. Okay, is the DQ not as in Dairy Queen? Oh, that would be cool. But the DQ okay, is something we're not going to do. Um, per se later, we will do a Q, but it stands for a double ended Q. And this is part of the standard template library. So we can just pull it in and use it, okay? But the idea here, a Q, you're going to have kind of like an array with the data that you have, okay? A double ended means we can add things easily and quickly to either end. So you could add new here, you could add new here. It's pretty efficient, okay? If you add in the middle, it's less efficient, okay? So when we get to stacks and keys, we'll talk about this more in advance and more um, in more detail, but a queue basically, not a DQ, a regular queue, a, a Q -U -E -U -E, is kind of like a line. In fact, in England, a, a line is called a queue, okay? And it's going to be a first in, first out. So as things come in to the queue on one end, whatever those are, numbers, they go out the other end. Okay. So all you have access to, if you're adding, you're adding to this end over here, you can only remove from there. Okay. So it has a very special structure. But the DQ has a lot more flexibility, okay? And you can go through uh, the book if you want, and it gives some more detail, some code examples. There are no homework examples on that, and it's just more, I think, a preview of, of what could happen. There is an example for seven in the book that you can see how that works if you're curious. Then the last section talks a, a bit more about iterators. We saw iterators a little bit um, in the previous example but there's more here about input iterators, output iterators, forward iterators, bidirectional iterators, and random access iterators, okay? Uh, there's also a bit on stream iterators. That's where we were doing the screen thing before. So that's interesting stuff there. It's gonna be useful for us later, but it's not something that there are homework problems are. It's not something I'm gonna ask you on the exam, okay? So it's a lower priority for us right now, okay? There's a programming example at the end of this chapter on a, a grade report. 
So it goes through the process of uh, looking at the problem, designing an algorithm, and then writing the code. Those, if you're having struggles at all with the material, are an excellent place to start because it lays out the whole process, okay? Too often, and, and it's why I don't really like testing in programming classes, but I'm not sure what else to do for grades. It's unnatural to set someone down and say, write a program right now. I would say it's analogous to say, write a poem right now, okay? That a program's a, a different kind of an animal that doesn't fit well into a testing format, but we have to test because that's the way the world works. Um, but it, it's worth going through that process of how we design. You have to be able to solve one example of the program um, on paper and use that example when you're coding. You know, you have to, to uh, understand what it is you're trying to do, okay? And I think that's really going to come into to play with the data structures we're moving to next, okay? So are there questions on anything from chapter four that we covered before we move on to chapter five? <clears throat> okay, so let me caffeine up there. We'll move on to chapter five, okay? So chapter five, again, is gonna be on the linked lists. So we, I talked about this a little bit, I think it was yesterday, on how the memory works and, and what we're doing here. My iPad's gone to sleep, of course. Okay, so the idea of a linked list is we want to have some flexibility when our data is of a certain way, okay? So in this case, if we have data where we're always going to have sequential access, okay, we're always gonna go through it in some fashion, okay? Um, a linked list does not allow random access. So there's no, that really didn't work out well, did it? A linked list. So there's no random access. I could spell or I guess write. So no random access, okay? Or, or no direct access. So you can't say, I have this linked list, give me the fourth element. You can't do that, okay? So it's limited in that sense. Um, but what it does for us, it's, it's efficient. Again, if we're gonna be doing the sequential access, if there's a clear path through the data, okay? So for this in the code, we're gonna do a struct. You may have seen a struct uh, when you were in C++ class. Uh, if not, it's not a big deal. It's basically, um, in fact, C had structs, but not classes, C++ added classes. It, a, a struct is a complex data type where you can put more than one item. It's like the, the attributes of a class, but there are no methods, okay? So it, it has a, a shortened format and you can't, there's no constructor, there's no, no access or mutators at all. It's just, it's a way to put multiple things together, multiple pieces of, of data, multiple, multiple variables into one entity. So we're gonna use a struct to create this thing called a node. Okay, so I thought at this point it would make the most sense to um, have story time about linked lists rather than code, okay? So again, looking at memory, this big space that we have, we know that if we're doing an array, the array is gonna be a contiguous memory. We're gonna use green for a pointer. There's a pointer to that very first memory address, okay? So if that's a thousand, okay, and that's that's array A, okay, then again that A is a uh, a pointer, a, an array is a pointer, okay. So we've talked about the pros and cons there. You have to allocate a, a contiguous amount of memory, which means that moving around is is not bad. But again, memory is not like a, a hard drive, you know, a traditional non a solid state hard drive, and that it doesn't have the the spend time and all that. So that's not really much of a gain for us, okay. But you have to know in advance how much you're going to need. Uh, you can't change on the fly, and that's kind of a problem. Okay. Then the next thing we went through through using the um, standard template library is is the idea of a vector, and a vector does have the ability to chain size, but it's going to have its members scattered out all through memory. 
okay? But we have to have a lot of pointers. We have to know where each of these are, okay? So somewhere we're tracking all this. So there has to be a pointer to each of those, okay? And we have to keep track of all that. We have to keep track of the size. So there's a lot of overhead to a vector, okay? So what a linked list does, a linked list is also going to be, it can grow in size, but the linked list is going to take the tag of all you remember is the starting point. And then every node remembers the next node, okay? Um, if you've ever worked with, with kids or groups of people before, uh, you often do this with kids. I know that when uh, my wife and I, oh, a, a few years back, took a group of students to, to Europe for a month, these are college students, but still, you had to be able to quickly figure out who was there. So we divided uh, all the, the the faculty that were there uh, had a group of about twelve students. So we we lined them up and gave them a number, and all you had to remember was one person. So when we say, okay, let's let's figure out who's here, everybody found that one person they were looking for, and then the last person found the, you know me in my group. So very quickly. You didn't have to call names. You didn't have to remember anything. You said, okay, find out who you are. And they, they found the one person that they were all accounted for and we were good, okay? Um, so that's a similar idea to the linked list, okay? So each node only has to remember the next node, okay? So from a memory standpoint then, we're gonna put a node wherever it is that it needs to be, you know, wherever we've got memory available for it. Next one could be anywhere, okay? And then instead of some centralized way of organizing all that, each node is just gonna have a pointer to the next node, okay? This turns out to be pretty efficient, okay? Pretty easy to, to, to deal with, okay? But we're gonna have to have one pointer to store everything, or we're going to lose track of what we're doing. Okay, so a couple of ways to draw these out. And I think that drawing them out is the best way when we get to, to doing things like inserting and deleting and all that, okay? And the book draws the nodes this way. And each node by default, and we can do more with this, but by default, it's only gonna hold one piece of information, okay? So that could be an ant, could be a string, could be a, a char, whatever it is. Okay, it's also going to hold a link. Sometimes that's called a data, whatever, you, whatever. And that's gonna be a pointer to the next one, okay? So <clears throat> I tend to draw them, and I, this, I guess this is from a different book I've used in the past. I tend to draw them this way, but the same basic idea, okay? You have your info up here, and then you have your link down there. So if we have multiple ones here, the link's gonna go there, okay? You have to have something that points to the first one, often called root, sometimes called head, okay? And this last one is gonna point nowhere or to null, not really nowhere, but to point to null. Remember, null is nothing that knows it's nothing. So it's self-aware nothing, okay? So this backslash lets us know that doesn't go anywhere, okay? So by doing this, we can pretty efficiently, no matter how fragmented our memory may be, we talked before a little bit about the stack and the heap. The stack are things that come in from the program. So as the program first initializes, so the stack keeps pretty clear. But the heap gets pretty erratic as dynamic variables are created and things are done back and forth. So it can get uh, where it's not the big contiguous blocks. So linked lists work well there. Okay. Any questions yet on the concept of a linked list? Okay, so let's look at an example of one. <clears throat> so let's say we have one, seven, twelve, fourteen, three. We want to make a linked list of that. Okay. In this case, it's going to be an unordered linked list. You can also keep them ordered, you know, if you want. So in our creation program, when you create a new linked list, you have to create either a head or a root 
that points to a node. You have to store that information there. So at the first step, <clears throat> we're going to get something that looks like this. Okay. So the, the head or the root points to the very first node. We've stored, and, and the way this looks, we'll have a head, and then that's a dash, a greater than sign, head dash info, in this case, is going to be equal to one. Okay. And right now, head dash uh, greater than or head link is going to be equal to null. Okay. So then as we go through the idea of inserting, if we're inserting at the end, it's not too bad. Okay. But we're going to do that through the use of a, a pointer that, that's going to move. Okay. So we can start node code saying something like, we'll set up a pointer to a node. We'll have that. I'm not putting all the code in here. Again, we're doing story time today. But we're going to basically have, let's say we're going to call it P equals head. Okay. So now P points here as well. Okay. And now I'm going to check. I want to find the last node because we're inserting at the end. Okay. So I can tell wherever I'm pointing. If I look and link is equal to null, then I know I'm at the end. You can't have a, if you have a null in the middle, then you've broken your chain. Okay. If I would say up here, the other way around, head is equal to P, your list is gone. You, you, there's no way to recover it. Okay. Head was the only thing that was keeping track of that memory address. If you set it equal to something else, it's gone. Okay, so you, you want to make sure you get that in the right direction. Okay, so I'm going to check. So here's just the, the, the very broad pseudocode here. I'm going to check as I'm going to insert. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to insert uh, at the end a seven. Okay, so I'm going to go to this node. And I'm going to say, does, so two cases here. I'm going to say, does p link equal null, okay, or not? <clears throat> Those are my two cases, right? If p link does equal null, in this case it does, then what am I going to do? Okay. I'm going to create a new node. Let's create a new node. We'll have some pointer or something like new or next or whatever points to this node. Okay. So once I've created the new node and I can go ahead and put in my info there, so I can go ahead and put in my seven. Okay. And this is when a new node always is a null. Okay. So now all I have to do to link these up, I have to let P link equal new. Okay. When I do that, it's going to replace that with this. Okay. So now it points to the next one. Okay. Other questions about that process? Okay, so let's go through again. This time we're going to insert again at end, it makes a difference. Insert at end 12. Okay. So when we first start, again, we're going to set, and I don't know why I erase that because we'll make it a different color. Though. We're going to set P equal to this node. Okay. We're going to ask the question now does P link equal to null? So someone tell me, does p-link equal null? Not in the first one. Not right, no, not ever right now. P does not right now, right? Because p points to the first node, okay? So p-link does not equal null. 
So I'm now to the or not. So how am I going to get to this next node? Okay. I'm going to let P be equal to P link. Okay. When I set P equal to P link, P now points to there. Okay. So then I ask the question again, does P link equal null? It does. So now we know we're there. Okay. So I can go ahead and create my new node over here. And you can do that in a different order. You can create the new node first and then put it in, it doesn't matter. So again, it's gonna have a 12 there. It's gonna have that, okay? So now I set P equal to new. And again, we'll have our new or whatever we're gonna call it. If we set P equal to new, then that goes away and that goes there. Then we don't care about new anymore, okay? And P is still there, but we finished that process and now we're done. Okay. So let's do one more. Don't know why I had an extra thing there. This is plenty. Okay. So the normal way we would probably do it is to go ahead and set up our node again somewhere in memory. These are not necessarily next to each other. We set up our new node with 14 with a slash. We've got the new pointer to a node that points to that. Okay. We're going to start again with P at the head, okay? Uh, as a part of our algorithm, we always start at the head, so you always know what's going on, okay? So again, I'm going to say, does P link equal null? Well, P link is right here. It does not equal null. So I'm going to let P be equal to P link, which is now going to point P to there, okay? Does P link equal null now? Well, P link is this link. It does not equal null. So I'm gonna let P equal P link again. So P now points to here. And now P link does equal null, okay? So I'm gonna let P link be equal to new, which is gonna replace this with that. And now we're done we can exit our function or whatever and all that's done, okay? So we can see all of these on the on the, the whiteboard. So we know where they are, right? We know what's there. From the standpoint of a program that you're using, you can imagine that this is all behind a black box. You can't see any of it, okay? So all that you can get to from a program at this point is the head info and the head link. That's it, that's all we can see, okay? So if I wanted to explore, I would have to go link to link to link with another pointer, with a P pointer or whatever you wanna call it. Sometimes it's called C for current, um, those kinds of things. Other questions on this so far? Okay. Let's look through the idea of, let's say, printing out our link list. Okay. Because Linux being Linux and C++ being C++, you can create four nodes. You think you've got them linked together run it, it's not gonna give you anything. No, no, unless there's an error, it's not gonna say anything. So it's, it's pretty useful, you wanna print this out, okay? So let's think about how we're gonna print this out, okay? So in my code, I know I've got head, but I don't wanna change head to go through, so I'm gonna have to set up a new pointer. So let's call this one, let's do current. Current is equal to head, okay? Then, I'm in pseudocode here. I'm basically going to, I'm pointing to a node right now. So I can go ahead and print out that node's information. Okay, so I can print out uh, current, sorry, uh, info. 
okay, which is going to print on the screen a one. Okay. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to have to loop through. Okay. And my loop through is going to be while current link does not equal null. Okay, so as long as I'm doing that, okay, I'm going to move to the next one and say current is equal to current link. Once I'm at the new one, I'm going to print out current info. Okay. And, and you have some options here in that you don't have to necessarily print this out first. You can do the while before all of that. But that's the idea. Okay, so if we're running through this. Current will start pointing here. We print out a one. When it hits this line, current's going to point there. We're going to print a seven. Okay, then we go uh, again around the loop, and then current's going to point to there. And we're going to print out a 12. Okay, and here's where we have to make sure, and, and again on paper we can see this, if our code's going to get that 14 or not, because it's possible it's not. Okay, so I'm, I'm at this line right here. I just printed out the 12. Okay which means current is pointing to that node. I'm going to go to this while, I'm going to check. While current link does not equal null. That's still true, okay? So now I can go ahead and move this to the next node to there, okay? With this line, I can then print out the 14, okay? Now is it going to end properly? I'm now going to loop back around to here and current link does now equal null, so I'm going to move to the next line after that. So we should be good, right? Th that's pseudocode, and I'm not specifying any formatting, but, but that should be the idea, right? That's the idea of going through a linked list, okay? Again, we just dealt with inserting <clears throat> at the beginning, or at the end, sorry. That's the simplest way to insert things at the end. But we have some other things to worry about here. We can insert at the beginning instead. So let's let's reason about how that could work. So let me get rid of this stuff. Okay. So let's say that instead of inserting at the end, let's say I want to insert a six at the head end of this. Okay, so like before, it's going to be a consistent thing. We're going to create a new node that has a six and a null, and we're going to have a, a next or new, well, I don't think we called it new before, it doesn't matter, a new that points to it. Okay, so I want you to tell me how am I going to insert this new node into my list. What has to happen? If six were at the beginning of this list, where would head point? The address of that struct. Uh, the new one, right? So head's going to have to point here. Okay. So if I do that in my code, if I say head is equal to new. Okay. So that becomes a thing. This doesn't do this. This does that. Are we done? Are we good? Does this work? Did it fix it? You've lost the list. It's gone. 100% gone. Diamante Christie, you see that? You see what, how we've lost it? I do. Okay. So yes. what, are we doing, what are we doing instead? 
link is equal to head, then head equal to new. I, I want to set this guy up to here first, okay? So I want to say, so how do I say that? I, I want to say that new link is equal to head, okay? That's going to fix that part of it. Now when I say that head is equal to new, now I'm done. Now it works. Okay. So a little more complicated, a little more need for caution so we don't lose everything. Okay. But that's the basic idea. Okay. If you want to insert in the middle, you can still do it, but it gets a little more interesting. Okay. So, um, you have to tell it some way why, why to insert where you want to insert. There's not really the idea of, of a position, okay? You can say, you know, find a 10 and insert after that if you want. So that, that's a possibility. Um, but if you're dealing with an unordered list, uh, inserting in the middle doesn't always make a lot of sense, <coughs> okay? So let's think out, again, we're doing story time today. Could you not like, um, bring just down there, hang on one second, let me. Can you not assign a number to the, the links there in your list and then go from there and put the stuff in the middle? I'm not sure what you're saying. Um, so you would give like the elements that's in your list, you would give them a number, almost like you're saying, um, if you give it a array list and you've got, you know, the 15 numbers and you say, okay, it starts with zero and it goes to 14. Right. Could you put it in there that way? You could, but then you might as well just use an array, right? then you're tracking everything an array does. Okay. Okay. And that's an important, that's an important concept. I'm, I'm really glad you asked that. Data structures should be picked for the job. There are so many of them. Don't pick any more, don't pick any less. What's Einstein quote? Things should be as simple as possible, but no simpler. Okay. Um, it reminds me, my, my dad used to make mountain dulcimers, you know, three string, diatonic, they don't have all the notes. And I love playing the mountain dulcimer, but there are people who play a mountain dulcimer to and try to make it sound like a guitar. That's, no, you can, but why? It should sound like a mountain dulcimer. If you need a guitar, play a guitar, okay? So the point here being, if you need an array, use an array. Nothing wrong with that, okay? But this linked list is very efficient at not having to mess with all that, okay? So yes, you could make it do whatever you want, but at a cost of why wouldn't you just do an array, okay? So very good question, I'm glad you asked that, okay? Is everybody clear on that? Anybody else have any other questions on that? Again, in, in all cases, you want to use the lightest weight or we say in, in, in computer stuff, the least expensive. So we don't mean money, at least not direct, by, by computationally expensive or computationally cheap or inexpensive. What we're saying is how much memory and processing time does it use, okay? So you should always use uh, a data structure that's the most efficient from a computational standpoint that still has the functionality that you need, okay? Because even if you are not in a resource poor environment, such as an embedded system, it's just gonna run faster, okay? But again, the trick is changing data structures after you've written a program is a monumental pain in the butt. So make sure that you're fairly certain that you've gotten the information from folks that tell you what the data is gonna be used for long-term so, so you're not having to change. You know, if it, and, and I will tell you, if you haven't done it, I've programmed for a living for 15 years. P 
people will tell you, oh, I'll never need that, but sometimes they need that. So someone may tell you, I never need to do anything but go sequential. And you'll get the whole program and they'll say, oh, what, why won't it go in a random order? Because you didn't say it needed to go in a random order. Okay. So people that say, oh, I'll never need that, that's when they turn to Google and say, Google, you're my best friend. Yes. Yeah, it, it is quite extraordinary. And, and as a young programmer, I, I would try, and I've worked at places where they try to make people sign contracts. This is really what I want, really what I need, mean. It doesn't matter. I mean, if, if a paying customer doesn't get what they want, even if they didn't, didn't ever tell you that, they're going to be unhappy and they're going to trash your reputation. So you just have to fix it and hope that it works out. But um, yeah, it's, it's a pain. Uh, people are a pain. You'll know. Uh, Christy, I know you've worked. Others of you may have worked. Uh, people are the both the best and the worst part of any job. Uh, but it's especially a problem when you're when you're writing a computer program for somebody and that they don't know what they, they literally, they're not being stupid. I mean, they may be stupid. That's a separate issue. Um, they literally don't know what they want. They don't understand their own processes. They don't understand the ramifications of what they're asking for. And Christy's smiling and laughing because she has seen this before. Um, you know, and you know, God love them. What are you going to do with them? I don't know. Bless their hearts, we say in the South. But it's still your problem. It's almost like they tell you at Walmart shoppers, and I haven't worked at Walmart, so correct me if I'm wrong if anybody's worked there, but it's the customer, unfortunately, is not always freaking right. I'm so sick of hearing that bull. Yeah, that's true. And it's like, you know, they think that the computer programs work, and then when you go to their IT and say, hey, by the way, this could work better if you would do this, they don't want to listen to that idea either. They want it the way that they want it, and that's it. Yep. Well, and you often get the people making the decisions want to be cheap. So they don't put in features they know they're going to need. Then they'll try to say later they had it there. And it's, it's if you take software engineering course, which I think all of you have to take, um, you get into how to rigorously track all the requests for features to make sure that the end result has everything that the client has said they've asked for. And they're still going to be unhappy. But what are you going to do? So... You have to keep in mind that flexibility, but sometimes you don't have an option. Again, if you're on an extremely resource limited system, okay, you have to go with an efficient system and just hope that it doesn't all change. Okay. So uh, we've talked about iterating through this. You can uh, often you'll do a search. Again, this is not a super efficient search, right? It's not like we have uh, a sorted array where we can do a binary search. That's never going to work. Um, even in an ordered array, so even if these are all in order, which ours happen to be, you know, because I can't say go to the middle, right? There's no middle to a linked list that we can see, right? Again, all we're seeing, and I'm covering my hand, but I can't cover it for you, but all we're seeing is that first node. So we don't know how many nodes there are, okay? So a search routine is going to look like we just printed, okay? But we're going to go with some pointer, current, or whatever, it's going to say. So let's just sketch one out real quick. So again, we're going to let current equal head. We're going to say if current info is equal to whatever our search K or, or whatever term we're looking for, whatever, then we can return true, else we're going to have to let current equal to current uh, link. And all this needs to be in a while loop while we're not at the end. Okay. And that's basically how that would work. You're going from node to node. At every node, your checking to see if you found if the info is what you're looking for okay and then if you don't find it then you return a negative one or, or whatever uh, however that works okay so the, the search is, is not too bad makes some sense okay uh, quick question well yep. not at what is that not at end, not at end. Okay. so more officially here yeah I, I, this this all should have been inside of a, of an of a while while current link 
a not equal to null. That would end down here. Okay. That's what that all mess is about. Okay. So if we're going to look at deleting um, a node, okay, we have to be able to search first. So you got to get the search working. Then you can delete something. Okay. But it's worth at this point that we can string these things together. Okay. So should be pretty clear that head info is equal to one. Okay. But head link info, what's head link info equal to? Does it make sense? Can I say head link info? Not yet because you've not defined it? Yeah, I can. It's okay. Uh, because head link points to the next node. So, oh, yeah. so yeah. this is. So we give you seven. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I meant to mess that up. My line there. Da, 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 da. Info. That looks likely now. You get the idea. So this is just a pointer to the second node. So that points to there. So that's equal to seven. Same way I can say head link link info is equal to 12. And finally head link 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 info equal to 14. Okay. <clears throat> so that's perfectly legit. We're going to use that. Okay. So let's think about again in our story time for today. If we're going to write a story. We want to delete the node with 12. Okay. And deleting, we, we have to think about it because there are going to be some different issues. If we're deleting from the head node, we have to re reroute head. If we delete from the end node, it's it's probably the easiest. But if we delete in the middle, uh, we'll, so we'll start with deleting at the end. So let's say we're going to delete 14. <clears throat> we don't know that it's the end. Again, what do we know? We know that head info is equal to one. That's all we know. Okay. So again, if we're going to delete from the end, okay. So we're going to delete the, the 14. Okay. We're going to set our current, let's call it C if we want, current pointer here. Okay. We're going to check and say the C info equal to 14. Okay. If so, then we know we need to delete it. But but if not, we're going to you know keep going until it does. So we're going to let C equal to C link until it does. Okay. So that's our search, right? We're going to go through, and we're going to have to return something if it can't find it, okay? But if if all this works, when we get to where we found it, C is going to point there, okay? And once we found C, we can check to see if we're at the end by seeing if C link is equal to null. In this case, it does, okay? So all we have to do here is make this before it a null, okay? But there's a problem. What's the problem? Can't backtrack. Can't backtrack, okay? So what are we gonna do? How are we gonna deal with that? Just store the pointer from the previous one and iterate through. You have to have two pointers, right, that's it. Okay, so you basically have to go through, and we usually use a, a P and an N for previous and next, let's say, or current and previous maybe. So if we have our C, we start off at C and P both equal to here. Okay, if that's not what we're, we're looking for, we're going to go ahead and move um, the C will point here. The P will remain pointing there. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. We're going to advance them both. So C now points there, P now points there. It's still not a 14, we're gonna advance one more time 
to C going to there and P going to there. Okay. So when we're at that point, we've determined, yes, this is the node that we want. And yes, uh, C link is equal to null. Okay. Then we can set P link equal to null. And we've erased it. Okay. Then they all go away. But that's the idea. You have to have two pointers when you need to go backwards. Okay. Because you can't even go back to head because you don't know how many times, unless you keep track of a counter. And again, if you add a bunch of stuff to it, you might as well just use an array. Okay. So that's deleting from um, the end. You'll have something similar. Let's say we want to delete um, the 12. We'd have a P pointing to here, a C pointing to there. Can we check to see if, you know, does C info equal to 12? It does. Okay. So in this case, we can let P link equal C link. Okay. So this is the C link right there. So if I let P link equal that, it's going to go directly to there. Okay. In essence, it'll be gone. Okay. So again, we've got this big thing of memory. Okay. So let's say our first one's here. So we can put numbers in there. We've got a, whatever I had a one, a seven, 12, 14. Okay, so we've got pointers from 1 to 7, 7 to 12, 12 to 14. Okay, so again, if we're keeping the previous and current, at the point where we're going to delete 12, if we have the, the previous points to there, the current points to there, okay, if I set P link equal to C link, it's just going to do that. Then that will all go away. Okay. The 12 is still stored in that memory address, right? But we can't get to it. And it's not marked as being used. So we don't have to free it up or anything. We don't have to deallocate it. It just goes away. There's no reason to wipe it out. It's still there. But And if we would have, at that point, set another variable, another pointer equal to that, we could save it if we wanted to for some reason. Hey, Professor Fraser. Yes. Can you slow that down? I think there's a couple of us not 100% sure here. So if you've got your previous pointer and you've got your C back up on the screen. Yes. And you're saying to make it um, equal to this, the P equals your C link. Can you explain that just a little bit better? Because I get that the C is going to the 14. Um, yes. So how is it instead of P equals C, or P link would go C link, that would be why. Because you're sending it to the C link. So if it was P link equals C, we would be doing 12. Yes. Right. OK. Yeah. OK, and because we're not doing P link equals C, we're doing it the C link. That's yeah. why it deletes the 12 off. Yes. Gotcha. You just explained it. Good job. <laughs> I didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, it I is. was thinking like algebraically it was coming into play and I was like, that's why no. because we're adding in the link. So it'd be like A plus B equals C. But then if you have A plus C, it doesn't always it equal B. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I understand. Well, in that case, it would because it's addition, but you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. But yeah. you know, that's why doing, that's why we spent picture time today, you know, drawing pictures and story time. Because link list and trees and queues and stacks are difficult to visualize, especially when you're getting used to it. So what, what do you do? But if you look at this and, and you can label things, okay, so in this case, I need another color. What's another? Oh, wow, I got lots of colors. Let's do this color. Okay. So this link here is P link. 
right now. This link is C link. Okay. So not, and that's not from here to here, this address. So C link points to this address and P link points to that address. So if I change the P link to C link, it now points to this address and that, that's kind of the idea. But by drawing those pictures, you can kind of see what you need. Okay. And drawing it out over here, you saw pretty quickly why you had to have a, another pointer where you wouldn't necessarily see, you get to the end, you're like, well, how do I, you know, how do you draw a picture? Okay. And when you're working on the code, do a simple, you know, a one element link list isn't enough, but if you do a, a three or four or five element link list, then that's a little better. Okay. So here's what I want you to do today to get us started on this. Okay. And you can look at the book, but I don't want you just to cut and paste the code. So let's do some, some, something simple here. I want you to create that uh, node struct in some code. Okay. I want you to implement a linked list program. Okay. And again, you can copy from the book, type in from the book. That's okay. But I want you to, to type it in yourself so you'll understand more. And all I want you to be able to do for today is add to the end. Okay. I want you to be able to add the beginning. I want you to be able to print. That's it. Okay. And I think it's all in the book. So it's just a matter of transferring it over, retyping it, putting it in a fashion that you understand. But on any of the things from the book, if you type it in yourself and try to understand every line as you're typing it, there's something about translating it from the reading into your brain, into your fingers, that is better than cutting and pasting. That, that you'll learn more what's going on. Okay. So that's not a homework per se, but when we come back at two, um, I want you to run. We'll run. We'll, we'll uh, switch to each of you and do a screen share. And you can show us if you've got this working. And then we can deal with any questions that you have. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to say, I, I keep forgetting that normally when I teach this class, you would have had me for an entire semester in C++, where I, I deal more with, with, with how I like things to be. So, and I'm not holding anybody accountable for not knowing how, if I haven't told you. But I think it's important, not just here, but just this is a, this is a life lesson. If you move a program to the homework directory and it doesn't work, and you know it doesn't work, you've tested it, you know, um, in your comment block, you need to say that it doesn't work and, and what you know about that error, okay? The reason being, I like to think real world. Someday, hopefully, uh, if you want such a thing, you'll work as a programmer. If I'm your boss and I say, write this program for me, and you say, yep, yeah, it's done, and I go to run it and it's not done, I have a right to be very angry, okay? If instead you're like, uh, yeah, I've, I've got this, but, but if you enter a five, it blows up and I don't know why. I can deal with that. That that's that's a good job. You know, if it's a minor error, you get a whole whole bunch of points for that. But what's not acceptable is to have a program that crashes every time or crashes on even numbers. I mean, programs are weird, or crashes on negative numbers when it shouldn't. Whatever the issue is, you should know that it's got an issue because you've tested it. And put that in the comments and we're good. But but don't ever turn in code for me. Don't ever turn in code on a job, especially on a job. I can't fire you. Your, your boss can. Without knowing if it works or not. Okay. We haven't talked much about testing. And again, um, th this is only the, the, I guess now it's a third class students take, but before it was a second. So we have to think about that. So what are we testing? W we have to know what values the program's supposed to work on, okay? Is it just integers? It, does it take uh, real numbers? Uh, can it deal with negative numbers? What about zero? Um, those things you have to test for. And if they can't, if your program won't handle them, you should be testing to make sure people can't enter them if you're asking people input, okay? 
So when you deliver a program, it should work as advertised or there should be a, an explanatory note in the code, okay? Um, and try to make them. Um, we're, we're not in our first programming class anymore. So try when you have the time. I know this is a super compressed class and, and summer is hard for everybody, but try to take a little time to make the output of your programs clear. Make it pleasing, make it look like, you know, uh, don't run a program and you ask for two numbers and print some, just a number on the screen. I type in a 12 and a 15, you say seven. S seven what? You know, tell me. This plus, this is a multiplication. This is a whatever it is, okay? So try without being overly verbose. You don't have to write a, a novel every time, but try to make your program look like someone who knew what they were doing did it, you know? Um, again, it's not the most important thing now, but it's, this is a class that's worth starting to think about that. People will judge you on, on your code, uh, what it looks like, how it's organized, and people will judge you more on what your program looks like when it's running. Is it easy to use? Is it bulletproof where you can't, you know, can't, you can't make an error? Uh, talking about crazy clients, I had one system that I wrote when I was, you know, early, probably third, fourth year of my career, that it was a, a secretary that had to run it. And it would ask for a number and she would always type in letters every time. Instead of the numeral five, she would type out F-I-V-E, -E, even though she knew she wasn't supposed to. And I remember, remember don't you, I, I love the older you get, you, you'll remember yourself being stupid. This was a good example of that. I was really angry at her. Why does this stupid person say my program's not working? It's not my program, it's her. I remember telling my wife that. No, it was me, right? It was my fault. She was stupid. That's a separate issue. But I should have either accepted what she was going to type or I should have not had the program blow up because that's what it did is blew up. It should have said, must enter a numeral or whatever you had to put. Okay, so if, if some, we always talk about idiot proofing your programs. There are always bigger idiots than you can ever imagine in your brain uh, out there. It, it is quite amazing. Read the warnings on products, you know, not to be stuck up your nose. Yeah, then that means someone's done it. So yeah, don't- Oh, good, don't, really glue in your hair. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't put this in your eye. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna glue my eye together. Uh, although- that though is our society has made it to where people are so open to that though, because they're like, oh, well, it doesn't say just this. So there's a lawsuit and they allow the lawsuit. It's like, you can't fix stupid. You, you really can't, uh, sadly. But your program should at least exit gracefully. It shouldn't blow up when someone types in something stupid. You know, if you ask for the date and, and they put Bob because Bob's the last person they dated. <laughs> it happens. I mean, that was my date last night. No, no, no. Your program shouldn't blow up. You should say, you know, and you can't. Here's what I like to do, but you got to be careful when you're testing your code, put things like, don't be an idiot, you know, be very abusive to people. Don't, don't even put it in there because you'll forget and the boss does it and then you have problems, but yeah. But yeah, try to make your codes bulletproof, try to make your output pleasing, try to make it so someone knows what they're seeing. Okay. Um, again, it's not the first thing I do on a code, but when I get it working, I like to pretty it up a little bit. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, if you've got a minute uh, when everybody logs out, I have a couple questions. It's not exactly class related. It's more like job related and future related. I'd like to talk about okay, you can do it. Okay, so I'll see you guys at two o'clock. Uh, work on that little bit of code and we'll see what we get.